three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 29. And uh, we're joined by the lovely Dom the Bomb Herberton. I know this, we're, we're sitting right next to each other for a change. Normally we're looking deep into each other's eyes. But, uh, <laughs> this is a bit off putting, I'm not going to lie, son. Uh, we've uh, we've got a, an interview coming up with Glenn Irwin. Uh, it was actually it ended up being a really long interview, so we'll we'll have to keep the intro quite short and sweet. Um, it, this is going to be quick fire facts, so let's go straight into it. MotoGP, <laughs> what's the crack? <laughs> so there's a MotoGP race today. Actually, uh, I presume you didn't get to watch it. I saw a bit of it. Oh, did you? What did you see? Well, I dropped me. I went to pick me dial up and uh, saw the saw the start. It was unreal. Absolutely fantastic start. Because Marquez was, what, fourth row? Yes, because he had that huge crash in qualifying. He went face-planting on mm-hmm. a MotoGP bike, didn't he? Um, no, he started from the fourth row, and he just hugged the white line all the way around. And it was just it was just like, he made Paul position look like you don't need it. He just went mowing through. Who who was the lad on Paul? Uh, Quattararo. He, what, it was like one of my starts, What he ended up right at the back, what what happened there? I know, I f- you know, he actually did the fastest... Would you like a wine gum, Chrissy, by the way? I go on. Go on, no, ca- carry on talking while you've got a gum in you. <laughs> After the yeah. fastest, did the fastest lap ever in um, of that track history. Really? Yeah, in practice and qualifying. And uh, then I don't know what happened. I haven't sort of read the news articles or anything, but it didn't happen for him on race day. And he, you know, he finished right down the order. I think he's about ninth. His teammate beat him, and uh, after so much promise from from the weekend, it, he struggled to deliver. But um, Spe- speaking of not delivering, Lorenzo, mm. how crap is he at the minute? He's just not getting along with his Honda, is he at all? It, it's just not working for him. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen uh, Philip Island last last week. That was a fantastic. No, I didn't race. see that. Really good, mate. Uh, Rossi got the whole shot. And uh, there was about seven of them all changing positions for the lead. It was it was a mint mint race, um, but same again for that. Lorenzo was apps. Uh, he was dead last, I think, and I can't remember that how far he finished behind the leader. But it was absolutely miles off. But uh, I tell you what, just before we get into the the, Do the conversation, <laughs> no, uh, we need to get the sponsor in. The, of course, the sorry, sponsor. So uh, the sponsor, exa- absolutely, yeah. So. This podcast is sponsored by Incontango Training, a leading risk, finance and treasury consultancy. And I had an email this week from Jonathan, the, the guy that runs the business. And they've, they've just got a website at www.incontangotraining.co.uk. So you can check out what they do on the, on no, the website. No, 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 no not, not, not you can. You will. <laughs> and if you listen to this, you will go to that website and you will look at it. <laughs> and they've just changed the Twitter handle as well. So it's at Incontango Train. So Incontango Train. So check that out, and thanks so much for being so so loyal and sponsoring this podcast. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, honestly, I think this is the longest relationship I've been in. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, um, no big shout out on my personal side of things. Um, Eileen Davies yet again, you know. So she's obviously chucking a couple of quid my way. So thank you very much, dear. You're a superstar. And for f- like you say, the MotoGP results uh, for today: Maverick Vinales took the win ahead of Marquez, and Dovi made the podium. Rossi fourth ahead of Rins, Morbidelli, Quattararo, and Jack Miller making out the top eight. He got Big, a podium in Australia, didn't he? Yes, Miller, fantastic race, but he was he was not you, you're not gifted a podium in MotoGP, but unfortunately, Maverick Vinales uh, having a go to try and take the race win from uh, Marquez on the last lap. Chuck went over Lukey Heights, and I've never seen a crash like the it. Wind. He kind of went to high side, and it, it looked a very innocuous sort of just a little, little rear slide. But the way that track is, obviously, it's like a roller coaster. It just turned into a real vicious high side, and just chucked him over the bars, and off off he went. You got you, you know you've got to hand it to him for having a go on the last lap, but it just Marquez just stalked him the whole race, made his move, and then he just didn't have a reply for him. But um, that that promoted Jack Miller from from fourth up to third. Ah, but it was good but to get a local a local lad on the absolutely on his local yeah, GP. So you know, fan, fantastic result for Jack. Keeps him in the job for next year. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Big news from today as well uh, is Marquez's brother, so Alex Marquez in. Moto Two wrapped up the Moto Two World Championship, so f- uh, which is kind of which is kind of fitting for this podcast, isn't it? Because obviously, there's obviously something in the bloodstream. 
you mm. know, as far as what's going on with these families. But obviously, you're going to announce who's on the on the uh, the guests. Sorry, my brain's having a it, these wine gums have frazzled my brain, young and <laughs> um, no. So we never got a chance to speak with a guest about you know that book you were telling us about. Bounce. Is it called Bounce? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah so no, it's a shame. Obviously, next time we catch up with our guests, we'll have to have a talk about that book. What was that book called again? I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to buy that book. Uh, Bounce. Bounce. It's, yeah, yeah, just about, obviously, about the environment that you're in and everything. So Yeah, so it's, it kind of discusses the, you, you know, this whole sort of nature-nurture debate. Yes. And the, the guy that wrote the book, uh, his chosen sport was table tennis. And he was... He was uh, lived in an area in London where there was a 24-hour uh, table tennis club and all the local kids had, or the the members of the club had keys. So they had the access to be playing each other competitively for, you know, a lot of the time. And in so in this tiny area in, in North London, so of a radius of a few miles, there was like... Two British, two British champions, three world champions, loads of European champions, and his debate was: it, it can't possibly be all to do with this talent. Aye. So, like this, um, well, talent, what, we, what we would say is the nature. So, like yeah. the genes, it can't possibly just be the case that in this tiny area in North London, they've they've all just got this me- special gene that they're all good at table tennis. His argument was the fact that they've he, they've had the opportunity, they've they had a special coach there, they all got to play each other. That there was circumstances where the they were in the right condition. To, to practice and that allowed them to, to you know to to get the success that they did so yeah and it, it, there's all kinds of you know theories and bou- like abs- bouncing around and stuff like that <laughs> I would say <laughs> yeah. uh, but no like you say talent uh, talent only gets you so far natural talent only gets you so far but you've got to make that up with skill and obviously in this case it's the Marquez family are very much that you know you've got two world champions bouncing around your living room, you know, they're, they're, they're going to push each other on, aren't they? Absolutely, and there'll be, there'll definitely be a proud mum and dad in, in Spain tonight. Rolling in the cheddar. Not Mad. that they weren't already proud, but you know. No, another way, uh, horrendously disappointed. Another world title. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, sort of achievement for the family and, you know, well done to them. But uh, I tell you what, just before we get on to the interview, I would just like to say that in the... Do you know how we've got the British Talent Cup in this country? Oh, yes. Obviously, uh, yeah. this, it's actually ran its course in this this country, but, it, you know, the, it's the championship where the all the kids are on the same bikes and it's yes, it, it, yeah. bringing talent through. Um, there's the Asia Talent Cup, who which were racing over in Sepang with the, the MotoGP this weekend. Yeah. And there was a 20-year-old lad, uh, Af- Afridza... Mananda, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, lost his life in a in an accident. So, f- from us us are chasing the race, and obviously we just send out our you know deepest condolences to yeah. the, to the family and family and friends. Definitely. Um. So yeah. But no. So it's um like I say we'll. Yeah, we'll step it up from there. So everyone, get comfy because it's a it's a long it's a long old chat this one, but it's it don't it's worth it. It really is worth it, and it's uh, I guess he's he's very honest. He's off the cuff, and it's it's great to have him on, isn't it, Chrissy? That's it. And so over to our guest, Glenn Irwin. And here we are on chasing the racing, and we have the Irish Austin Powers International Man of Mystery, Glenn Irwin. Are you there, mate? I am indeed. How's it going? Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, everything's groovy, baby. Groovy. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, Glenn, uh, obviously, ha- hasn't been the the best year f- this year with the racing, but uh, we'll. I tell you what, we'll start from the beginning, and uh, obviously, you come from a racing family. Your dad uh, has a you know a fantastic history. Uh, what What are your sort of first memories of of growing up and uh, you know getting? Um, getting into racing yourself first memories probably being uh, in the paddock you know at, at dad's racing so like being in the northwest 200 and you know the, the local like irish short circuits and whatnot um and you could never walk through the paddock and get anywhere in five minutes because everybody always spoke to him so as a as a child it used to really really frustrate you because you couldn't get from a to p you know without, uh, without anyone stopping and chatting to your dad um so that's like, i can rem- remember all that quite vividly um and then uh, we all, we we started riding uh, motocross bikes in our backfield. Um, it was quite good because it had a stream 
that was like a basically to clear it you had to double it um, and it had a hole in the field that looked like a, like a bomb had landed in it um, so you had some natural like um, which was was that, probably actually the case in Northern Ireland isn't it yeah so it may it may well have been a bomb I'm not too sure <laughs> um, but yeah we all grew up right in there and like the, you know the memories are me and my brothers um, you know the five time uh, world champion now Jonathan Ray was regularly up and you know friends of ours as well, the McCammons and um, my cousin Lucy, who's actually married to Kyle Crutzlow now, she she used to be up on a, I think she had an, a Talajet, um, so there was like a range of people up every uh, every weekend and that's where, that's where it all started, um, so in the blood from dad and then that's uh, that's when the wheels start to turn. All right, so obviously we've briefly touched on your family, obviously you've come from, well you've got a big family haven't you, how many brothers do you actually have? Um, yeah, there's four. So there is four, four know, brothers. I, and, um, I, no, hang on. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, dad's a good looking guy. Yeah, you're sure he hasn't got any more? You know, obviously. He, 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 probably, he, he probably does. You know what it's like. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's, sorry, three brothers. So there's four four boys in total. And then I've got a younger sister as well. Um, so yeah, it's proper. Uh, everybody has uh, has raced. Um other than uh, Sarah, who she competed in horse riding, so yeah, it's proper competitive. And now, like we all started in motocross, then I jumped across the tarmac. Andrew jumped across. Graham remained professional in motocross. Uh, Ross retired and you know got good jobs and bought a couple of houses. And now we're all back racing tarmac again. So Graham's made the switch, and Ross is uh, racing locally in Ireland. So we've all uh, we've all came over to uh, the good side, the dark side. So all right, and um, in which order's who then? So are you the oldest or the middle or what? What's what's the crack? I'm trying to. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. so the, Ross is the oldest, um, and then it's me, then Graham and Andrew. So Andrew's the youngest, uh, youngest boy. Um, so yeah, yeah. And now obviously Ross is. Did you say Ross has just came back to racing this year? Yeah, he he was actually away from racing uh, for twelve years. But you know, to, to give you a bit of an idea of like how uh, sort of quite good he is he was an Irish champion, champion in motocross and he uh, started riding a super twin 650 just over a year ago about 14 months ago and then uh, we managed to get him a, a ZX10 sponsored by a company Magic Bullet over in uh, Northern Ireland and he, he's been on it about three or four rounds and race one at the Sunflower was like atrociously wet conditions and he actually passed a uh, Una McGlinchey and David Allingham, who was on a build based superbike. Um, and it, it looked like he was about to finish third behind Christian Eden and Cooper. And uh, he got like the, the tea bag in his fuel pump. You know, it's something that oh, it's yeah. quite like dad and lad type thing. You know, uh, you're not you're not running around with, you know, top, top, top class uh, technicians stripping the bike down between events. But the the, the tea bag was bogging and uh, the bike started to cut out on him. So he finished fifth. Um, but to pass them guys was uh, it was unbelievable, it was surprising. Huh? Yeah, really unbelievable. It was really good to watch. Me and Andrew were and we were jumping about like we were on the bike ourselves. It was brilliant. <laughs> oh, it's it, it to be honest, it is phenomenal because when you look, <laughs> you're all at the top end of your disciplines, all of you. So is there something is there something in you know your dad's bloodstream or something that I could particularly you know I don't know can make, I get a blood sample? From? Uh, well, that's it. I you know what I mean? Can we not just bottle racing success and just you know make a fortune of it? <laughs> Chrissy, I think we should delete this podcast now. We're just going to business with Glenn. We're just... <laughs> You're talking about you know being a competitive family. Imagine uh, I can just picture you turning up at a like a go karting event as like a oh. family out. <laughs> do do like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's bonkers it's absolutely nuts like we don't do it too often because we always fall out because everyone, everyone wants to win but uh no it, it is good uh i don't know how it's worked out you know where we all have came you know quite you know quite far in racing so far um you know definitely i think natural talent that you get from your parents is that's proven in a lot of sport you know if your your father or your mother is good at something then um, quite often the kids take up that discipline and we've uh <laughs> There's, there's definitely that, like, isn't it that uh, battle of like nature over nurture? So, kind of the nature side of it maybe is what you have in the blood, and the nurture is kind of how much effort you put in, you know, to to make that talent better. So, I know we've uh, we've all worked really, really hard. Um, you know, I took the training serious, and then Andrew came along, and 
he started to take the training really, really serious. And Graham was doing the same for motocross. And yeah, I kind of go along the, the lines of you only get out what you put it in. And it's a real corny saying, and loads of people say it, but it's so true. Um, and I guess we, we, we all do work hard at it. It's the only thing I can say. But I think my dad as well has been a great, a great, great upbringing. Um, he Do doesn't. Not... Sorry, go ahead. When you're out and about uh, these days, obviously with your your dad's, you know, being famous in the past, and then your brother with the motocross side of things. When you're sort of out and about the local area, who's who gets stopped the most for sort of pictures and selfies, and who's who's <laughs> which is the most well? I know the answer to sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I I don't know. I think. Um, Obviously, due to the size of the Northwest 200, um, like I'd love to answer this and say not me, but prob- probably me. Um, that, you're just a bunch of competitive nightmares, aren't you? So, yeah. Andrew, Andrew was our next guest next week. And we're gonna, so if you want to slag him <laughs> off now before he slags you, that that's great. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I will slag him off plenty. No worries. Like, but yeah, no, it's funny because usually, like, uh, like Andrew will be like, "Oh, you're Glenn Irwin's brother," and like this is up to a point where he's like, he's won a British Superbike race this. this this uh, this year, sorry, he's won a race, and uh, he'll still get that. But a couple of times lately, like um, like I've been asked, um, "Am I Graham or am I Andrew?" And I'm Andrew's brother, and you're like, "Oh no, starting to turn. I need to get my finger out." So <laughs> it's uh, and and he is loving that. <laughs> and obviously, but, uh, Graham, all good. Graham stepping across to road racing this year. Uh, obviously, I presume you had a, a you know played a big part. Oh, 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 what Graham? Graham's coming to roads now, is he? No, like Tom. Tom, 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 That was one of my questions for later. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. See his step from you know the motocross to tarmac. Was it? It was an injury of the wrist or something that actually forced him across. Is that right? Yeah, it was. uh, Do you know what? He's had loads of niggles in in motocross. Like he's broke his neck. He's had both his shoulders operated on. Um, you know all the usual things that you break. You know frequently in that game. And he talked about coming over, and he actually had another year's contract with uh, KTM to do Grand Prix in British. So he, he walked out of, uh, like, when he signed that two-year deal, he had just he was just uh, finished up as a British champion with Honda. So he was obviously in quite a, a, lucrative, a lucrative position, you know, within, you know, there's not massive amounts of money in the game, but, you know, there's he was at the, the right end of it. So he walked away from the final year of his contract, you know, and, and fair play to him. His wrist wasn't right. It was a ski forward injury. Um the bone had to be took out and put in like three times, and I, I don't even know if there's a bone in there anymore or what way it is. But uh, he um, he talked about it, and yeah, you do what you do as family. Um, you know, I had had a decent year at it, and thankfully managed to pull in a little bit of support from him for him, and uh, I built a bike and kind of kind of went from there. You know, it's it's it just it's happened now. You know, it's not about what we done, but we got there. We built the bike and. You know, we've been for years racing. All our bills are paid. You know, we don't know, don't know any, any money, and we we managed to do it. But he, uh, you know, it was difficult as well. There were some things, you know, I, I got, you know, for for his bike at the beginning of the year that you know I thought were going to be, um, you know, phenomenal. But obviously, I didn't know the difficult time that I was about to have. So he did race with a uh, sort of some negative in the bike that he shouldn't have had um, and it's only when he spoke to me at the final round that I kind of caught on and we managed to rectify that and um, change the map in it basically and he uh, he went out at Brands and he was running a very strong sixth I think before he crashed out so I think uh, I do think although he showed his potential I don't think he really got shown um, what, what he could have done because there, there was that definite underlying um, issue at the time but now, now that bike's absolutely mint and uh and he showed that at the at the final round but uh he, he, he'll be good next year chrissy he'll be uh he'll be annoying you <laughs> <laughs> yeah is uh graham sorted for next year um no not yet i think you know there, obviously there's a uh, certain teams you know in stock thousand that would be uh certain teams perhaps making a, a comeback that you might be aware of as well um so there's uh there's been conversations had but i think um I think like that we'll probably end up doing our our own thing again, just for the pure fact that you can control the 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 budget side of things. Um, like the, if you can get into a good team and you've an offer and it's affordable, you go for it. But there's no point Graham paying. Like you know, there's a lot of yeah, and you guys will know this because Chrissy, you'll have witnessed this. There's a lot of all fur coat and no knickers. 
Um, and where he is now, I think he has to jump into something that allows him. Like, is he going to win the championship? Definitely not. But can he win races by the end of next season? I would say he definitely can. Um, and the only way to do that, to compete against the likes of yourself, Richard Cooper, you know, Keith Farmer, I hear, when the potentially was going back. I don't think so anymore. Um, but guys like that, you guys like yourself, for somebody like uh, quite new to compete with you, they need to be on the best because you guys are going to be on the best as well. So we're, we're working really, really hard. He showed me a plan tonight, what he thinks it will cost. And I could say we're trying to save a few pounds here and there. And I'm like, Graham, just don't save that. Just put that in and we'll try to find that. You know, we can't do it. I don't believe in doing anything in halves, but at the same time, like our dad drives a lorry. You know, there's no family business. Um, it's just the generosity of sponsors and, you know, ourselves just helping out. Mm-hmm. And is, um, yeah, I, I presume you'll have a lot of sort of local support from, from Northern Ireland that, you you know, that's maybe like helped your dad and you, your brother. Uh, is it Met, Met Healthcare that's been a big backer for you and your brother? Yeah, there's, uh, do you know what, there's just so, so many that, you know, I could, uh, I could mention. Spend like, the rest uh, of the podcast list. Honestly, them. yeah, we, we could chat about it forever, but like MET Healthcare, um, along with uh, Megastore 247 initially, started to back me and that was in around the the year prior to martrain and then the martrain year and onwards and you know that that uh that really really got me going and then since then like you know multiple sponsors jumped in um you know james jameson construction became my biggest sponsor and continues you know to be so um phone a cab you'll see them on like my leathers uh graham's helmet lee johnson's um scott swans and moto three jeremy mcwilliams uh, he's on the Tyco bike, so and if you if you if you're Irish, you're going to get sponsored by Ford a cab. Is that yeah, you? basically, and it, it pretty much lads when you land in Belfast and you need a cab, you, you get a phone a cab. So look, there's so 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 many, but you know, I'm thankfully... bringing Glen Irwin. That's what I'll be doing. I want a free lift. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me a, give me a shout. I'll get you a few quid off. But uh, yeah, <laughs> MET Healthcare have been been really good with Graham as well. And, you know, we have we have our plan for next year, and and that will depend on you know we do need like MET to do what they've done for me and to do what they've done for Andrew. And they continue to back us, you know, they're, they're, they're conti- like continued uh, in a lesser way, but still in a, in a very, very generous way. And um, they back us as personal sponsors now. So if they can do for Graham what they've done for us, um, you know, I believe the ingredients are there that he'll make it happen. And, you know, it's funny who, who jumps back in. Like uh, you'll remember Cody and Ali, um, his, his uncle Des used to run, you know, that team, Des and Ali Developments. And, you know, Des has been really, really good to Graham this year. Um, he's came on board. Um, a guy, Josh Wilson, developments as well. So there, there's loads of people, his long-term sponsors from motocross, like Chris Scarlett. So, yeah, he's a lot of people to thank too. And, you know, that, that's what will allow it to, uh, to happen next year again. Fantastic. And uh, go on, Dom. Oh, oh, no. I was, gonna, on, I was no, just going to no, say, no, what, no, 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 no. At, what, at what point in uh, your journey did did you sort of go from being being that sort of privateer where you were you were sort of chasing the dream to then stepping in and being being a sort of professional rider and you know moving moving up the ranks? Um, the the last year that I paid to go racing was uh, two thousand and fourteen, um, which was into Gearlink in the first year in Supersport. Um, and to be fair to Mike, it wasn't. It wasn't certainly wasn't what it would cost, you know, to run anyone super like a sports. discount. So, yeah, yeah, it was kind of like you know, in around the fee of what you you would have paid for stock six back then. You know, I think now stock six ride could be I don't know, would it be forty thousand pound or whatever? I'm not too sure. Um, but it was you know, it, it wasn't even to that extent. The following year was a a free ride there, um, and then we went on to PBM. Um, first two years were no salary. Year three was salary. Um, this year was salary of Kawasaki um, and and Taiko, um, and it's kind of went from went from there. So yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all it's all, it's all going good now. But you also realise how quick it could uh, go back, you know. So yeah. hey, don't get me wrong, like you don't just go on professional and and take the foot off the gas. <laughs> yeah. like, you, you work harder and harder because you know you get older and you have like a family now, and you know then. You, you know you have bills you have house you've you have to put food on the table and you know that that's that's a reason to uh you know, to keep working hard but the biggest reason is it's it's what i love doing yeah um, it's what i loved doing before it ever paid paid me a pound um and it's what i would probably do as much as i use all them reasons 
I'd probably put the same effort in if it was still my just my hobby because I love it. It's as simple as that. And uh, well, actually, I don't know if you know, but we had Keith Farmer on the podcast. Was it last last week or the week before? <laughs> I've, and, heard, uh, I've heard. I've heard all about it. <laughs> we were talking about uh, this. Was that, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What do you mean you've heard all about it? Is this, like, is that a good yeah. thing or a bad thing? What? what go on, and let's get your opinion. <laughs> It's it's really really funny. I feel sorry for Keith. I really do. Um, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. We we had a we had a nice dinner. Um, so we did uh, with um, Taiko at a uh, Oldham Park. We were all out having a bit of fun, and uh, it was like myself, Christian, and Keith. You know, had to go for a dinner with a uh, guest of Taiko, and it was really good fun. Good evening. I drove the the hire car, and you know we had a bit of crack and. Um, I've never ever had an issue with Keith. Um, you know, I started racing against him in 2010 in Ireland, um, and then he won the Superstock 600 in 11. I finished second to him, and then we never really raced against each other until uh, Superbike, I think. Yeah, that that that's kind of the way it's went. Um, you know, and it's you know my Superbike career has probably been a bit more successful than his. You know, maybe not through his own fault. Some difficult teams he's had some injuries you know as as we've seen um but i i certainly i think did i hear that it said uh, that i uh, one of the urbans doesn't speak to him because i haven't got over a championship like i uh, i'm certainly not too hung up about what happened in 2011 um like i say i'm i'm lucky what i do now and you know it, it's sad that keith thinks he got but maybe he uh I'm, I'm sure he knows that's nonsense maybe that's just how he has to deal with it himself i don't know Oh, well. maybe, maybe we can have a, our first we can have a chase the race and uh, chase the we, race and we can tonight. unite <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Dom's oh, eyes are lighting up <laughs> no do you know in, in, all, in all honesty it's, uh, it's, it's tongue in cheek but he, he's like Keith is like well lad you know when I've uh, he, he's raced with Andrew for for title and yes I'm, I'm Andrew's brother and that got argy bargy you know with Andy but that's racing you know at the end of the day it's a, the way I say it, it's a dangerous game but we all love doing what we're doing I there's no point carrying anything, um, but he always pops up with a little whisper here and there, and I'm like, "Oh man, come on, just let go of it, <laughs> like let go." But uh, it's all good. I don't I, lose any sleep. I bet, I bet. And uh, yeah, so after you had that Superstock 600 battle with Keith, did you say 2011? Yeah, 11. Yeah, yeah. So you, you then went up to Super Sport and were with Gearling for a while. Um, one one year in particular stands out for me was the year where, with when Luke Stapleford won the championship, and there yeah. was self Luke Stapleford, um, Kyle Ride, Jake Dixon, Andy Reid, James Ruspoli. Uh, I probably missed a few people out, but it, it was it was hellish racing. It was, it it was, was a fantastic hellish. year yeah. of, of uh, Super Sport, and uh, that year me I was riding for the uh, Harry Bow team. And, uh, yeah, in stock six, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and as a team, we all used to go out and watch, and we all used to have every single Super Sport race. Everyone would stand around and put a pound in the in the jar, and we would pick a rider who was going to win. <laughs> and uh, so it it was just it was brilliant to watch, and um, that sort of really stands out as the sort of as a you know. It's, I don't yeah. think your bike was yeah. as was very strong that year, but it was definitely. It was definitely clear that you know you'd made a big step forward with your riding, and I think at that point you you were ready to step up to a super bike. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, what what's your take on your sort of super sport journey? Yeah, like like uh, like any time at the beginning of super sport, you know, you, you step in and you get you get your kind of ass handed to you, um, and you have to learn and improve, and and then comes an opportunity where you can you. Know, maybe do what you can do and that opportunity came with Gearlink um, and like you guys said we I felt like uh, there was bikes that year where there was like Luke Stateford you know him who was as a great super sport rider you know he went on to qualify what pole ahead of Sofologa at Qatar you know in the years that followed that so um, he uh, he knows how to he's probably a he's a middleweight class expert um, and he had a very 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 good bike Um where is then, he now? He he's actually still in Superbike, but I, I've heard retirement on the cards and whatnot. You know, I've seen seen a little bit of Facebook statuses, but I, I don't think oh, how old you know, is I don't he? think that will happen. I've actually uh, heard that somebody told me that he was uh, planning on buying a Ducati for next year and run like running his own teams on profile Ducati. Um, right. 
Sports, which you know would would possibly make sense after his the success that he had running his own team in Supersport. But like you say, he did really shine on the on the Supersport in bike. The yeah. uh, however, he was strong at Assen this year on the on the Suzuki. Uh, yeah, that was definitely, he, he that was definitely phenomenal. His, like, his standout performance of the of the year. But um, yeah, yeah he's interesting. A t- he's a tough top rider. Like in racing against him that year with uh, like Rispoli and Andy Reid on on the traction control Yamaha. That was a that was a good package. Um, Jake was on the Smith's bike, and to be fair to Jake, um, he was like at the end of the year at Brands. Um, I think I broke down in qualifying or something, and came up through, and I managed to match Stateford's pace like throughout that race. But I caught Jake, and uh, he was the only rider I could pass down a straight like with slipstream, so I could pass him, and he could pass me. Um, so both our bikes were fantastic. Like the gear length bike, the the chassis point of view it allowed me to kind of be me and you know to go to the limits of you know what a super sport bike could do but for over the course of a year to, to win the title just was uh to be honest it was look was strong and look on that package together were, were a step too strong for me and you know i think just the top speed a little bit hurt is and you know, racing against guys in 600s that weigh maybe 10 kilos lighter than you um you you do notice a difference you know i'm, I'm sure you have before as well and it's uh, it can be tough, but at the same time, what I learned that year was I had to ride so hard to to give any you know fight for a win or whatever for to win any race that I did. Um, and then when you step onto you know a good superbike after that, you can kind of show that you deserved that because you've had to ride so hard. And obviously, going into superbikes, it was like the golden opportunity essentially, really, with uh, stepping up with the Paul Bird team on the Ducati. Um, how did how did that deal sort of come about from Supersport? Um, honestly, it was really really weird. Um, a sponsor had bought uh, a bike off Birdie. Um, he's a he's a collector, so I think he bought like Ian Hutchison's uh, TT Stock Thousand winning bike that year, if I'm right. Um, and uh, and a really random kind of like series of phone call thing you know to collect the bike and um, we just said oh what's your plan next year and there was no uh connection that james uh was involved with me or anything and he had said oh i'm looking at putting a young rider beside shaky and um, i'm looking at kyle ride or glenn Irwin." and uh, my sponsor rang me he's like you, you gotta get on to paul bird you gotta get on to him so it went from there and to be fair to birdie you know he stuck to his word and um, he he uh he gave a young rider an opportunity and you know and that was me and you know, again, it's like it's all about grabbing opportunities. When when I heard of that, that was going into Assen. Um, I think we had three rounds left, and I managed to uh, beat Kyle. I think in every race from then till the end of the year, and you know, I seen it like there was a like a golden ticket as such to Superbike. Um, Absolutely, mm-hmm. and and it certainly was. But you know, when when I look back now, like I we had three good years there, and the last year was definitely the best you know my pace was there to win loads of races but i didn't win loads of races um you know i I probably had to to win earlier you know to unlock that right that i can do this you know to get that deeper confidence um but the first year i don't think it really mattered what superbike you know i was on because you're you're so new to superbike you're not getting the potential out of it whatsoever um the second year was a year i felt we could be really strong and you know that got spoiled uh by a component failure um, of a left handlebar and I broke killed. my neck and my sh- yeah, not killed on my neck, my shoulder, my elbow. Um, that was a difficult time, but again, fair play to Birdie. Um, you know, he's uh, so easy to move on from a team and have a difficult relationship with your ex team owner, but it's always stayed really, really good. Um, he signed me again for the following year, and you know, let's face it, we didn't even know if my tricep would even work properly again, um, which thankfully it did. and yeah, I felt like I repaid him. We were third in the championship that year. You know, I think Shaky was probably employed to win it. You know, I was still to to back him up as such. Um, but uh, we finished third. It was good, and uh, the kind of it ran its course, but it ran its course in a nice way. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he's somebody I owe a lot to um, for my for my chance in Superbike, and you know, for what's for what's coming next as well. I'm really really excited about that, and you know. I guess I can only thank people like Paul and that for giving me the opportunities in the first place. 
So is it a case of okay? You're you're in a are you still on talking terms with Paul Bird? You know, is it a case you walk over hello son, or is it? Oh yeah, it, yeah. Obviously, Back we're not going like, to delve into the details of you know why you know why you stopped riding from anything like that. But is it still no unburned bridges? Shall we say? Is yeah, it still there's no all no good? unburned bridges at all? Yeah, like even uh, when all the the carry on happened when you know we had the unfortunate thing this year where it didn't work out with uh, you know the the, the ride I'd signed for initially and. He did send me a message, you know, like, keep your head up, you're a good rider. If you ever need to talk, give me a shout. And little things like uh, when I had a problem with my eye in the middle of the year, he was straight on with like top uh, eye surgeons in London. And you know, it, obviously, Birdie being Birdie, like he's not exactly going to go to the, the local guy around the corner from him. So uh, he's not going to find the local witch yeah. doctor. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's not going to do the Chinese medicine. But you know what? Fair play to him. He didn't even, it takes two seconds to send that message. but he didn't need to do it, and he did do it. So well, I, I really I appreciate it. Yeah, that, that's meant. You see, the thing is, right? This is from the outside looking in, and people people read what they want to read. You know that. You know you, you you're a professional rider, and you, you just you can people throw in bullshit left, right, and centre. But from the outside looking in, at the moment, it just looks like it. It. it I'm going to say how it is. It. It just looks like you're crossing bridges and burning them. And yeah, uh, it, but yeah. And it's obviously that's good. It, it's good to hear that. That's not the case sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So people be going, oh, well, he's, he's left there, he's done this, he's done that. But it's really, it's actually refreshing for someone like yourself to not be falling out with, you know, you, you're going to fall out with people in walks of life anyway. But it's just nice to see that you're not just pissing everyone off or they're not uh, pissing you off. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Like, and and, that, and that, that was the case. Like, uh, even, uh, you know, with uh, Pete, you know, at Bournemouth and whatnot, um, you know, it was a uh, it was a great opportunity when when I went there. It was the first time I was contracted um, you know, to to a manufacturer. Um, so, uh, like you're you're kind of placed in that team as such. You know, from Kawasaki. So that that was a like a cool thing to you know to a cool kind of step up in your career and everything. You know, obviously we thought was going to be really really strong and it didn't work out. But again, like you know, that was a simple. A, it's all timing. Like I, I take this random thing in my eye, completely out of nowhere, um, and I miss a race, and I'm about to make my comeback, and I'm thinking, do you know what? Like, we've tried, they've tried, and I've tried, and yes, there were some things that they couldn't do, as in there was a problem with the bike that nobody could find out what it was, and it was making these crazy vibrations, and you know they got that sorted in the end. But I, th- I think there was there was more issues in that team, you know, and. You know, and Pete knew that anyway. Um, that were going on in the background, and the right people knew them things. So, as I was going to make my comeback, I, I had a good chat with Pete and and uh, and and Ross at Kawasaki, and I just said uh, I didn't feel like I could do what I expected to do, and I also didn't feel like I could do what the team you know expected and deserved to get in return and and re- results, and you know that that. That uh, relationship ended up very good as well. Like as much as I, uh, you know, I bought some stuff off Pete this year for Graham's bike, and there was an invoice, you know, the other day for you know a reasonable amount. And if that didn't end good, you know, they, them invoices don't get paid, but they, you know, they get paid instantly. Um, you know, there's no hard feelings off Pete whatsoever. He linked Graham like uh, spare spare rims for the year as well. You know, the 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 top of the range ones. So there was a uh, as much as that looked really bad on social media. Um, yeah, that, exactly that case it. whatsoever yeah. and you know the the taiko thing was you know now that we're on it you know we may as well explain it, it was a, a great opportunity um you know it things work both ways you know i was a uh, i was really wanting another ride to to kind of show that you know i hadn't lost it and you know that that i had pace still there and taiko at the same time uh as much as they gave me the opportunity, they also needed a rider. So it worked both ways because, you know, Keith had sustained his injuries, you know, that put him out for the year. So it, it went good. It was, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, could I, could you call it a success? Yes. You know, we, we started to improve and, you know, our last weekend in Aston was probably our most difficult, but it's the one that looked the most promising. We were second after free practice and, you know, I hold my hands up. I, a couple of crashes and I kind of rattled my confidence for that weekend, but, at the same time, it's where the business side of things come in. You have to make decisions for next year, and you have deadlines to give yes or no's to. And you know, yeah, that's unfortunately, it. yeah, it, it, we didn't choose to continue that option. And you know, you have to respect the team that 
it gave them an opportunity if I moved on to try somebody like Taylor McKenzie um, to give him a trial for 2020. And do, do you know what? As much as it was annoying not riding because um, I was enjoying the bike, as a business side, I can see exactly why it made sense to do that. Um, and there was no hard feelings whatsoever. Like I, I had a good chat with Philip at the Sunflower um, and I had a good chat with him at Brands Hatch in the grid in the Superstock 1000 race for Graham. So again, there's no hard feelings there and I would Should like we- to think the door is open. Well, which is which is which is really good to hear because like, the thing is, recently we, we've somehow become like the dark web, haven't we, Chrissy? You know, we're kind of chipping, we're we're trying to chip away because from <laughs> you know everyone just sees the tits and the glamour. Now, don't get me wrong, who doesn't like glamour and who doesn't like tits? But oh, it, it's sorry, like, oh, I swore, sorry. <laughs> oh no, crack on, swear jar. Oh, that's it. <laughs> chucking at the charity jar. So. But, uh, you know, it's a case of. You know, people are paying for rides. People don't see what goes on, and people only get given one side of the story, and that's what happens with social media. So that, that's it's great to hear your side of it, and I think a lot of people will like definitely, definitely see that from a different perspective, massively. But um, right on a total unbiased note, because both me yep. and Chrissy race Kawasaki's, um, which is your favourite bike, then Ducati. How was that at BM? Sod your professionalism right now. Just pick okay. a bike. Well, I, was, I was actually just going to say, obviously, we'll put a thing on the Facebook and the Twitter for people to ask questions. And uh, it seemed like a fitting time to ask. But uh, a guy called Matt Late on Facebook said, having ridden the Ducati V-Twin, Panigale, the ZX-10 and the BMW, what are the strong points and the weak points of each bike? Which I thought was a great uh, question. It is a good question. I, uh, the strong points say uh, the Panigale was really really strong out of a uh, a corner like graham hill bend and is it a uh, certes it takes you onto the back straight at brands um it, it had great punch out of a corner like that but a corner like drades like turn two at brands was just a little bit too slow for it it's the same as not kill herpin and it would really really struggle to punch out of them um it when was, you say struggle to pull, as in it would just wheelie or it would struggle uh, yeah, the, in the it would tour. be a bit of a yeah, a bit of a monster, but at the same time, as much as it, as it was a monster, like it felt like a ZX10 would leave it for dead out of Knock Hill Herpin. Um, so it was a good bike when you were on its own, um, really good, like a uh, fast second gear corners, third, fourth gear stuff, really, really good. Um, diff weak point of that bike. Um, if you were in a fight, we'll use Not Kill as an example. You can roll through turn one, two, three, four as good as anyone. And you can be right on the back of a ZX10 going into Not Kill Herpin. Um, good luck if you want to make a good lunge in the brakes. You'll probably end up in the grandstand. Um, it, its weakness was heavy braking. Um, that was definitely the Ducati, a downfall. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, the Ducati. Really? So, it's- yeah, it, it wasn't, that wasn't its best point, but it was really, really rideable. It was light. Um, yes, it could be. When you say heavy braking, do you mean as in the rear wheel would just want to come up off the ground or lock up or yeah, the front end it, didn't it feel good? It would never back in. So it would never, ever, ever back in. But y- yes, you get rear picking up. I guess you get on a lot a lot of bikes. I mean, you can work that, you know, with your, uh, your setting. But in terms of feeling, when you went for like a big front end lunge, you just didn't feel like you were really going to get it stopped. Um, it, it's just what, where the bike struggled. Um, but then when, when I look at the ZX-10, the ZX-10 was phenomenal in that area. You know, you could pass anyone in, in heavy braking. Um, it was a little bit more difficult through your third, fourth gear corners, your, your high speed corners. Um, it perhaps didn't hold a, a line as much, as good as a, a Ducati. But for me, the, the edge grip is where I struggled you know, massively with, a, with our bike this year. Um, and that's... Uh, you know, that that that's something that really stood out for me. That the the Ducati had a lot more edge grip um, than the ZX10, and then the the BMW. Um, its strengths were it felt like riding a 600. You know, really really nimble bike, um, easy to ride. You know, is don't like using the word easy in racing, but it was easy to ride. Um, it was was quite good, like in a left right change of direction, like the Britain. Chicane, Hizzy Chicane at, at Alton Park, um, really, really strong in areas like that. It's a uh, it's weakness. You know, obviously it's still in stock trim, so uh, speed was definitely a bit of a weakness. Um, and I think you know if they fix that, it will be competitive. But 
I guess that's something they. It looks like they've struggled with that. You know, as you can see, even in World Superbikes. Um, but I could I couldn't find a lot wrong with the the BMW other than it was a bit slower, but at the same time, it wasn't running a superbike engine. So, basically, someone turns up and goes, "Right, son, there's a couple of, like there's several million million squillion pounds. You were going to run your own team with your with your family and whatever, and you had to pick one bike. What bike would that be?" Out of all the bikes now. And money, um, money, money's not an issue. You know, I know you drive around in your Lamborghini with your gold Rolex <laughs> at the moment, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a Ferrari with a Brightland. Oh, shite. Sorry, <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> missed that up there. So I'm I, saying which... that as I'm sitting in the Citroen C5 Aircross, kindly sponsored by my chargers. Good stuff. Um, so what bike, what bike, what bike, what bike? What bike? Uh, look, obviously the, the Ducati was a really, really strong bike this year. Really strong. Um, so it'd be hard to say no to, but I'm probably like you guys. I'm on the internet every day at the minute, and like the new Honda sounds really interesting. Um, but that's I don't know. It's hard. It's hard that, to say. But, but yeah, I know you're not going to admit to it, but I've started a vicious rumor that you're on for Honda next year. So I'm hoping <laughs> the whole I'm hoping the whole paddock's heard it by now. But uh, hey, oh, I know I know no. you can't admit it. I know you can't admit it. But um, tap your phone twice if it's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good. Guys are good. That. What the, what the, what the, what the. Do you know what? Like it's uh, it's funny because uh, you know obviously I spoke to the Honda guys with uh, Andrew racing there, and me not been at the last two rounds, you know, on track, and I went out and worked with Andy as a spotter, so I was in and out of the the garage a lot with him, and you know, thanks to the guys that they fed me in the hospitality, but uh, you can get you can add two and two together and get five and. Yeah, you know, there could be a little bit. There could be some truth that we've we've certainly had uh, conversations for sure. Um, but you know, there's always other things in the pipeline and a few things still to uh, get over the line just yet. You know, with, with options. What What do you think of the uh, Bautista and Leon Haslam lineup for the Honda World Superbike team? Uh, yeah, I think I think that's strong. Um, you know, that that's the thing that uh, that really really interests me. Like um, Bautista, not left, messing about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like when Batista left, the uh, like a, a winning package that that he was on, um, you know, it, it sounds like he was paid quite handsomely there, um, to go to to Honda. Um, I think that's like an exciting kind of time, or there's a there's a reason why he's done that. Do you know what I mean? He, you know, the the new bike is rumored to be really really exciting. You know, I know at the minute all we can see is uh, like test photos, but. I look at why is he done that, and you think that this bike must be good. Um, so, I think the team will be strong. Um, the only thing is, Leon rides very different to to anyone I've ever seen. You know, I can see it on track, and you know, I've now seen his data. Um, so, in terms of development, I would say uh, he'll he'll probably like something quite unique to himself. Um, but he will be a, a good rider to you know to get the most out of the bike and you know what it can achieve type thing. Mm. The, uh, a question that I really wanted to ask you for, like earlier in the conversation, but uh, there wasn't an opportunity. Uh, when you were with Paul Bird, obviously being teammates with Shaky, who's you know like with his success and his experience, uh, how how was it having Shaky as a teammate? Did he did he help you a lot? And like, you know, was were you sharing information, data? Uh, did you know? I'm just interested to see like <laughs> hear your take on that relationship. It was uh, it was really really good um, at the the beginning in terms of help um, you know back back in the first year um, the the data side yeah you could you could overlap and, and see you know what Shaky did uh, you know different different to me and definitely I learned some things off him you know that I'll carry with me uh, you know anytime I ride a superbike now you know wherever it is um, some little techniques that he has um, at the same time you know the two sides of the garage as much as they they were separate uh, teams, as in crew chiefs and electronics, um, and they worked in slightly different ways. Um, so I didn't always like benefit from him in a bike setup point of view. But in terms of experience, like you can look at him, he's really, really savvy. You know, he he's a uh, he, he knows what he needs to do to get the job done, um, and all he cares about is winning. And that's uh, you can learn about how how he applies himself you know he's incredibly focused incredibly determined and you know i looked at him thinking like it's not like he certainly wasn't over the hill but you know he was kicking on in his late 30s and he was 
like uh, still super super fit. You know, you would see him getting chains in the in the lorry and testing, and you know he looked like a twenty year old. If you know what I mean, so you can learn like there's a reason why he was still at the top. You know, right up till unfortunately his uh, you know his incident. Um, but he became a you know a good friend. Um, like my my young lad thinks uh, the world love him. Like Freddie's only three, but he he still brings up shaky and random conversations. Like so. <laughs> He's had, yeah, he's had, he's had a, a positive impact. I learned a lot from him. Um, but I think at times, you know, again, opportunities come, you know, like I said to you, the golden ticket perhaps at PBM, but going in as a, a newcomer beside Shiki, there there's also a negative, you know, and it's it, at the beginning it was like you're in there and it's it's Shiki, the Shiki show and he does so well at, uh, you know, undeservedly creating that that vibe, um, because he he was delivering the goods. So at times that could be tough. Um, you'd walk down to pit walk and you would get like two people clap for you at the beginning, and shaky walks in ten minutes late, and the whole pit lane start going mental. So <laughs> little things like that. But look, you learn like that 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 now wouldn't uh, wouldn't affect whatsoever. But I uh, know he's a good guy, and he uh, he knows how to ride a motorbike, and uh, it'd be lovely to see him come back, but. You know, it looks like I don't know. Ring between the lines that he probably won't be back, but uh, he's had he's Not had a great career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you obviously I understand that you've got to be professional, and you might like struggle to answer this question. <laughs> but uh, with the with the Kawasaki job, what like what went wrong? What what would you say was the issues of why that that combination didn't didn't really work? Um, I think. I think the team won't mind me saying this, um, but I think sometimes you have to listen um, to to the rider and not talk too much about the past and, and previous riders. Um, that that's yeah, I think. Yeah, each each year is different. I, I, we can hear what you're saying. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> no, because you, you can't go back. You can only go forward. So correct, that, correct. That, that is the thing. So right, speaking of going forward, mind obviously you're coming <laughs> to the TT. So are you the man who's going to stop Peter Hickman next year? Hang on, I, there's been I, there's been no announcement. I'm coming to the TT. I keep reading this rumor as well. <laughs> well, look, I'm spreading them and you're answering them. So come on, a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, like for sure. Like uh, there's de- there's a definite interest in coming to the TT. Um, still a few things in that uh, bit to be kind of boxed off, but we, we are close. Um, we're, we're definitely we we are we are close. But it's it could still go either way. To be truthfully honest, but let's say it was all to happen. Um, would I? Like, am I the man to stop Peter Hickman? Like, honestly, I spoke to somebody the other day about this, and when I arrive at the TT, like, it won't be Glenn, the BSB race winner. It won't be the Northwest winner. Like, when I go there, I, I'm just the new kid, the rookie. And um, but you see, the good the good thing is, is people because, especially in roads, as you know, people ask about the TT, 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 and it, like yeah. everything else around it. But the thing is, you're a very, very successful roads man as well. You know, you've won. You've won Northwests. You've won Macau. Now, did you win the Ulster as well? No, nah, I finished second in my debut season on a six hundred. Um, did I did manage to lead the race? Um, there, you see what I mean? One hundred and twenty-eight point four or something first year. You see, there we go. And you just think people people don't forget that, but it kind of yeah. is because yeah, because yeah, you, quite frankly, you, you step in and out of it, don't you? I, it's I, opportunities. I, you do. Yeah, you're just like, all right, I'll turn up and this and that. And obviously, Peter is very much a known dual rider, shall we say? You know what yeah. I mean? Does the roads every year as well as the BSB every year? And it's a case of, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, the TT people have high expectations, but you know it takes time to learn. But yeah. but let's let's talk about something that you have done already, and that's in regards to the Ulster. So, you know. If MV Augusta give you six million pound, you turn up on an MV next year, <laughs> and you <laughs> turn up at the at the Ulster. Is it something because that we've talked about it on the pod loads and loads of times? It's a bit like that that onboard footage of Pete Hickman on the BM passing Dean Harrison. It yeah. was just a phenomenal footage, you know. And when you looked at that, you know, is that something that you think? Well, I can do that, you know, that I can take that pace to Peter on a road. Yeah, when when you look at it, you definitely the, the racer in you thinks like that. Um, and I, I guess the, the thing I can take a bit of comfort with at the Ulster is I have been there, you know, and I, I was competitive and I've, I've raced Pete there in the six hundred and whatnot. But 
you know, until you go out, like I always say, road racing so f- you can never really go and you know, we've all made predictions in the past, and half the time you read these predictions in the paper, you've you haven't even said what the paper is printed. You know, I, I said before Northwest this year, I'd, of course I'd love to win every race because <laughs> you're you're a motorbike rider, but um, it doesn't. I, you never actually go out and say I, I'm going to. Um, yeah. Road racing's funny and like Dom, like you do it, so I'm sure. You you understand, but like the Northwest this year on the Tuesday, I couldn't ride at all because it was the first time I was on a road since the Northwest the year before, and since then a lot had happened. You know, we had lost Dan, we had lost James Kyten, uh, yeah, yep. Adam Lyon, uh, William, and the thing like uh, you, and they were human beings. You know, outside of the leathers and the helmet, you know, we we you know, you you sleep and go to the toilet like everyone else and eat do you know what I mean so yeah exactly uh, th- things affect you and I-, I couldn't ride at all I couldn't uh, when the bike got out of control I-, I probably thought it was even more out of control than what it was I, I couldn't stop looking at the, the furniture and-, and things like that and it took a bit of a-, a reset because you know I think a lot of that was due to that difficult period and on Thursday I loved riding my bike at the Northwest probably more than that than I ever have and and that was on a bike that we were still struggling with, you know, with with some issues, and, and managed to do the, the fastest ever lap. So it was uh, it's so funny how I can turn around. Um, but even like when I when I go back to the northwest, like like it's it's a little bit different there because I've I've got a bit more success there. So I, I feel like I can talk about it without talking nonsense or or anything like that. But we are strong at the northwest, and you know I know when when we do go there, when we get into the right frame of mind that we are a competitive package um, and I, I do feel quite at home at that event but then like if the TT was to happen like that's completely like I, I read so, I read something the other day like can you become the fastest ever newcomer like uh, like uh, one thing I won't do is go to try and become that um, Yeah. all I can do is like, I have spoke to Davy Todd he had a good debut and right okay what did you do you know I've I've spoke to Hickey and heard Hickey talking about what he's done and you know well I go to the island quite a lot yes I'm planning on doing like if if the green light goes ahead do that like two days a week type thing um, I'm already learning the track in preparation anyway and I watch like four on board laps every day and I play the playstation so like all I can do is learn it as best as I can and you don't go there like I don't know how you done it in your debut year, but I certainly won't be going to the TT to go out and go flat out. Um, I'll be going to really enjoy riding a motorcycle there. Like, kind of privileged to to be to be there, if you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, I, t- a, I totally but, agree with that. And the thing yeah, is, it's it, weird, the, especially when the TT is concerned. You know, it's quite frankly, it's only the arseholes that are going to be like, oh, you didn't, you didn't become the fastest newcomer. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's the, the, especially the TT, don't get me wrong, all the roads are the same, but there is, a, as you've highlighted, there's a huge difference between the Northwest and the TT. Yeah. There's a humongous difference. You know, it's a bit like, all right, let, like, to me, this is my opinion, it's like the Northwest is very much more a short circuit. And you yeah, yeah. can see that, you know, and that's where that discipline comes out. And then the TT is, is well, it's full on, isn't it? It's just, yeah. it's, a to- it's a proper road circuit. Yeah, the, the bumps and like what's in the onboards, like you never see somebody on a, a super bike going from second to third or, or second to fourth for fifth gear in such a short space of time when the bike doesn't even want that. You know, the bike wants to be revved out, but because of the nature of the track, like in the run from Ginger Hill, to Carrowmore, onwards to Glen Tramon, you know, Milne Town. Um, it's, it's so bumpy that uh, you, you hear you guys short shifting that much that you're actually taking power away from the bike, but it's the only way through that section. So you, there's, it's not it's not a get on and ride it flat out. Um, and that's what what, what I'm learning, um, you know, by, by asking the, you know, the right people as well. And, it's a. Uh, it's funny, you know. Again, when people talk about the newcomer thing, like when you look back, like David David Todd's a top rider, and and went in two thousand and eighteen when when there was the best weather there's probably ever been at the TT, you know, in our in our lifetime. Um, and he didn't manage to top Hickey's uh, Hickey's record from twenty fourteen. And the the way I sort of look at it is like I grew up really excited about the Northwest because it's on our doorstep, and from I was twelve, I probably could have told you every corner on the track without actually ever deciding I'm going to learn the Northwest track. 
you know, we, we just we just naturally know it by living close by. Um, and then my, my dad never done the TT. So if you look at Hickey, like he didn't grow up beside the Northwest. So he hasn't had the, the success there. But yet his dad did race the TT. So he's probably grown up. And when somebody does say like Hillbury to him or Ginger Hill or Gorsley, he can immediately like, like, vi- like vision what it looks like. Whereas for me, if you said them corners to me two months ago, I couldn't have told you if they were lefts or rights. I'm um, still struggling now, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. So do, do you know what I mean? Like that's uh, for me. It really, like, I haven't, I haven't grew up with. I've grew up with a racing blood, but I've grew up with nobody in our family um, that ever talked about the TT really. Um, and uh, it's, there's a lot of learning needs done. You know, I have to learn so much homework needs to be put into it. And, I'm enjoying doing that, you know. If it all if it all comes off, um, like all I will say is I will be ready, and being ready doesn't mean I will be ready to go and to to achieve something special. I will just be ready to go and you know compete. Um, yeah. You know, I'll be I'll trust myself to go there. Are you looking at doing a, a full road calendar? So are you looking at the you know the Northwest and the Ulster as well no, as the TV? No, no, it's uh, I think a few people would sort of thought things like that no that that's probably not it's not what what i want to be you know it's it's not about being any anybody really um you know i love british shooter bikes uh more more than anything and you know i i'm looking forward to hopefully getting back there on a on a strong bike if we can get some things over the line and you know just enjoying my riding there again enjoying riding good machinery and you know seeing where that takes us and the northwest has always felt like a, a holiday race um you know, again, just because of the probably the special memories as a kid growing up there. So I've always loved being around the, the North Coast on that week. So I enjoy it. it. It's like a relaxing week for me. Although you know, now we're always kind of under pressure to to perform. Um, but I do enjoy it. Uh, you know, the TT is like the. It must be one of them races if you're ever to win. That you know, like. Uh, there's like winning the BSB race is really satisfying because the level is so hard and everyone is so fast from first to 20th. Like they're all top, top riders. And um, so it's really satisfying. But if you were to win a TT, it's like sentimental. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's something that I would love to uh, compete in. You know, it's a sentimental race and n- never mind even winning one, you know, just uh, competing in it and starting a, starting a journey and, Wherever that journey takes you, it will then it, it it will take you. But in terms of adding in, you know, if you were to throw in more road races there, like you're rolling the dice more often. I I always talk very open about it. The more road races you do, the more you roll the dice, and that's kind of. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be that person who's you know saying I'm away road racing again this weekend. I don't want to. I don't want to do that all year. Um, like if the TT's over in June. I can put my head down and concentrate on, you know, doing the best job I can in BSB. And if that puts you in the showdown, then happy days. And, you know, if it doesn't, then, you know, it, then it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? And it means in the second half of the year, I can concentrate more on the on the short circuit side and, you know, do do a good job there. Sure. And uh, obviously, we were t- I mean, earlier in the conversation, we were talking about Keith Farmer as a, as a rival. You've also had a rivalry, like quite a strong rivalry, especially in the Northwest 200 with Alistair Seeley. Uh, obviously, yeah. with, with you both being quite local, uh, one thing that, that's really struck me over the last few years is the the unpopularity of uh, of Alistair over at the North Northwest. Even though it's a, you know, like a home race for him, do you, why, why do you think he's so unpopular uh, with the with the local <laughs> fans? Um, it's a strange. It really is a strange one. You know, you could look at is it because he was so successful? You know, like in in any sporting discipline or in motorsport in particular, you get somebody who wins week in week out. You can kind of get bored of them, but then there's also a lot of winners that we don't get bored of. So I don't think that's the case. Uh, Al- Alistair is a he's a good guy. Um, I always find it difficult, you know, getting asked a question like this because I like him. Uh, if you see him like uh, at a motocross track during the week doing some motos, you know, he's like, what well, he must be coming for cl- very close to forty now. Um, I think he's thirty nine at the minute, and he's still like a sixteen year old. You know, he's full of enthusiasm, full of the fun, full of banter. 
um, yeah. you know, he's, always and having a bit of crack. And, and <laughs> very, he's very, very fast. Yeah, he's very fast. And he, it's weird. I think, look, it can be one of them things. He's he's maybe said said the wrong things at the wrong time. Um, maybe some things he said there's, there's no right time for. Um, you know, he rubbed William up at Church Corner, you know, rubbing a Dunlop up in the north coast of Ireland is is uh, one thing to then go on an interview and say Robin's racing is what we do in BSB, you know, immediately after it is probably like, oh, no, mm. you haven't said that. And and I know, like, he would never intentionally hurt anyone or do do that. Because um, I think I do know him away. I, I know him to go to the pub with. Um so it, it's just, uh, I think, I, I think all what I'm saying, and the truth is, he also doesn't really care, you know, and, and I mean that in a positive way to him. Um, there's the keyboard warriors out there, and I don't think they got to Alistair one bit. So I, I think he, he's quite content, you know, by not trying to make amends to that. Fair enough. And his results are showing that, which is, which yeah. is which, no, which, doesn't affect which his results, does it whatsoever? So. Exactly, which is good. You know, it shows the professionalism in him. It does. You know, he's there to do a job, and he does it very well. So that's which is brilliant. Tell, tell me, that. tell me, tell me this, Dom. What's uh, what's your what's your favourite section of the TT, and what bit did you find hardest to learn as a newcomer? I'm still learning it now, man. Never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> bloody hell. No, hold on. What, what are you doing? This is this is me and Chris's show. We ask the questions, son. I know, you can't be I throwing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it different, you bloody hell. Um, bloody hell. Well, um, I did. I, I had to learn to ride a bike first. And I, when I went to the Isle of Man, it was my second year ever on a motorcycle. It was yeah. a case of, and like, like my dad raced the TD and everything. And it was a case yeah. of I was when never did on boards and my dad was very old fashioned in the fact of saying you only learn it when you get there and you you look up to your dad, don't you? And you can yeah. all right. And I never did on boards or anything. So, so but, you arrived there and never done on boards? No, I never did on boards, you know. Oh and the my word, I wouldn't even know what way to go. Wait, my dad my dad well, you see the mad thing is my dad just said, Look, you'll learn it when you get there and the only time I learnt the track is when he broke down on the classic bike. I had to go pick him up in the van. That's the only time I learnt the place. <laughs> Serious? Why are you? And it's uh, oh, that's it's, mad. You're not. What's your favourite section? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Me. I'm trying to think. Me. You see, crazy. the mad thing is, it's not. It's not really learning it. It's it, the biggest problem when you get there, son. Is you, you almost have too much time to think about your mistakes and that's something I, I advise you, you which you can't do because every time I like I used to do it like not this year the years before I was yeah. going corners going fuck you know why didn't I why didn't I hit the hammer harder why didn't I tip in it and you're going into yeah. the next corner going shit but the realistic side of it is when you get into a race at the Isle of Man in the senior you get six goals at each aye. corner aye 264 yeah. plus corners and that is something that you've really got to you, you, you've, you've almost got to almost forget about and you've got to take each corner as it comes you know you remind yourself of the mistake when you approach it yeah but I is, don't dwell on it exactly I was coming out of corners like when I was tipping like you end up finding yourself wanting to tip in too early and then the yeah. more years you go you'll find yourself well actually I need to start tipping in early but like there's a couple of bits like bottom of Bagarrow when you're tipping in just before Douglas Road corner going yeah, into Kurt yeah. Michael that's a corner that'll drag you in proper early and yeah. I learned that by mistake but then I'm going into Douglas Road corner for years going oh shite 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 I've knocked the lap and you, then you're like <laughs> bloody hell whoa, 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 and then you're on the brakes down to second gear and it, that's definitely a bit of advice that you just think if you make a mistake it's sometimes the best thing that can happen to you, aye, because, aye. because you just think, well, you know, you know, if you run on the brakes, like going in the ballot crane, you know, there's bits like that. Yeah, yeah. You can try. Yeah. Sometimes the best thing you can do, son, is make a mistake, overshoot on a corner gun. All right, just enjoy getting back. Aye. Don't aye, let yourself get well, back. Yeah. My best times have ever come from just getting home. You know, if I've yeah. run up into a corner, I've gone, oh shite, there goes the lap in practice. And then I come home and go, how the hell did I get that lap speed? Because I've Signature calmed down. Signature reaction this year when, uh, when you achieved your, what was your lap time? 100 and... 129.8. Uh, yeah, your reaction was brilliant. I've seen that video. 
Wait, I, I, wait. The thing, the thing is with me, the thing is with me, right? All I've ever wanted to do is race bikes. I haven't been able to afford it, and yeah. at no point did I ever think I'd get to the TT for a start ever. Yeah, you know, and be, I, and be a good rider. I'll... Oh, oh, you sweetheart, yeah, uh, you sweetheart. <laughs> and, uh, no, I thought I'd never be seeded, and I thought, yeah, I'll never get in the top ten on a superbike. Yeah, and it just when you when you came in, honestly, it was just like I've just. It was just like, well, you can see, unfortunately, aye. I've been filmed. You know what I mean? It's, aye, as long as I, it's like me getting on karaoke drunk. I end up getting naked. And like, it's just stupid <laughs> things. Man. I, get over, I get over the top of everything, man. Here, Chrissy. Yep. If you, uh, do you think if you had the same package as what Cooper had this year, you know, obviously being Ooh. in the paddock and whatnot, um, that you could have, like, I've seen you in the paddock for a long time and I, and I really rate you. And I think, uh, you know, the shooter bike um, opportunity you know, didn't work out for you or whatever, you're unlucky to, to not get stay in. But do you think that you um, could have fought with him week in, week out for victories? This this season just gone? This, this season, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, like, a bit like yourself, I had a lot of uh, sort of teething issues at the beginning of the season with the Kawasaki. So for the first few rounds, we were, we were miles away with, with the bike. Um, and then you know from the sort of mid-season onwards you know i was a lot lot more competitive um and towards that obviously towards the end of the season i got i got my race win at the at donnington uh, beating cooper and then i felt like i had the pace to to beat him in the last race uh, or certainly challenge him in the last race and um unfortunately i was involved in an accident yeah uh, but all in all honesty um watching cooper t- watching Cooper on track and on TV, I think he did, he did a sublime job this year. And it's very different, you know, ifs, ifs and buts and, you know, different, different setups or whatever. Um, it's all sort of, it's all talk really, isn't it? And at the end of the day, the facts are that I didn't, I didn't challenge him week in and week out. Um, so to be honest, I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, no, not this year. Um, I, I think he did a, he did a, a better job than me, uh, consistent. Yeah. And uh, he was, you know, as a fo- you can talk about one race, like odd races and odd, odd practice sessions or whatever. But, you know, to be consistently in all weather conditions to do what he did this year was I think he did a fantastic job. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've, that, that's not saying in the future, next season, you know, that I, I can't change that because, you know, yeah. I, I see a lot of room for for improvement in myself um so you know obviously that's that i'm aiming to improve and i've you know i've beaten cooper this season and i've beaten him in the past um so you know i, I certainly don't think he's he, you know that's that's not doable but yeah it's bringing uh, it week in week out like he does isn't it? absolutely yeah sure yeah. and um you know i've 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 actually well, I haven't actually uh, talked about next year yet, but I, I have actually just sorted a deal for next year. But I'm it's getting announced uh, this week, so it, it, right. I'm not going to mention. Oh no no no! Go on go on. Right, Glenn, you tell us you tell us who you're riding for, and he'll tell you who he's riding for. I I know. I think that's I know. I know who I'm he's riding for. for. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll we'll just leave that there. And <laughs> yeah, we'll anyway, I, 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 tell you what, I have actually got a few other things that. Uh, that I want to get get into this podcast <laughs> um, is um, we've got a, a Rhodes correspondent for the podcast uh, at a Hardy Breed, and they yep. sent us some information over about the the future of the Ulster Grand Prix. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we'll, the next one. <laughs> we'll, we'll me and Dom have actually spoke about you know the fact that I, I believe there's some financial issues there, and I think riders haven't are still waiting to be paid from from this year. Uh, now the the lad that sent us the information across, it's his favourite meeting of the year. He absolutely loves it. Uh, yeah. He said, it's, as a spectator, it's by far the best experience that you can get. Uh, yeah. You know the mass road racing f- um, at that speed, fast flow, and obviously the the speeds and like the racing this year was fantastic. But I believe that over the last sort of ten years, a lot of the events have have unfortunately been cast with bad weather, and the, therefore they've had poor attendance. And you know the the club is maybe you know struggling financially um do you know if there's any sort of you know there's rumors that it's going to be taken over by some new investors or uh do, do you can you shed any light on that um it's, do you know what i was actually i was speaking about this in the gym earlier um one of the i'm not, I'm not naming the fella but you know a, a family you know a family connection of uh somebody you know very 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 involved um 
you know, within the the Dundrog Club. Um, you know, we we spoke about it, and it's it sounds like they are relying, you know, on a like an investor or you know somebody to if you want to bail them out type thing. Um, it's it's really sad that that's uh, that it's came around. Yes, you know, like the Ulster Grand Prix has had, I think that they, they've had Agostini wrestling at it before. Um, it used to be part like, of the Grand Prix years ago. Yeah, uh, it did. It, it was. It was part of the what, what is now the MotoGP Championship. So it's crazy. Um, it? like, it's, it's, it's. I'd love to say to like. Well, I was going to say if you told Marquez to race there, he'd probably go round every corner with his elbow in the deck. Anyway, like, <laughs> but I can't say I can't see the rest of them being as uh, brave, brave as him. But no, it it sounds uh, it sounds difficult. You know, it's uh, it's a really really difficult one. You know, as a, as a rider. Uh, you know, not competing at it. I feel for the riders who, who have gone out and put like it was a really good day's entertainment. Um, you know the, the club done a really really good job because the weather was horrendous. I think it didn't start until about half twelve, one o'clock race one, but they they got the the full program in and you know for the riders to have put on such a good show. You know Peter Hickman obviously dominated it, um, Lee Johnson and whatnot and. To hear, you know, maybe these guys haven't uh, haven't received their money. You know, obviously this is all hearsay, so we don't know. Maybe some of them have, some haven't. But that that's that's difficult for them. But at the same time, you know, it's not nice to hear the clubs in the position. Um, you know, I I just hope that it gets bailed out. I honestly, there's not much I, I can tell you. I don't really know a lot about it. You know, I've, I've asked a few questions. Um, but from a you know sentimental side and for history side you know i hope uh, i hope they've continues you know it's had a a lot of top class uh, motorcycle racers have been victorious there and you know we'll have good memories a lot of uh, famous racing images you know are, are of are at the Ulster grand prix and it's a track i've thoroughly enjoyed riding with uh, the club themselves personally sponsored me for a few years and to to run the Ulster grand prix logo on my lellers in british super sports so it, you know there's connections there i'd like to see it survive and you know, it's like anything in life you learn from your lessons you know what's went wrong you know the, the attendances and money dropping down you know i think is part of it you know if some i don't know let's just hope it it gets sorted out and everything's uh done done wisely and i think it's a uh, i think it suffers a little bit in a in a way where like um we spoke about this earlier. It, it's it's an international, and there only is three internationals. Like Macau doesn't fall under that banner. You know, Macau is more of a, an exhibition, um, if you want to call it that. And your TT, your Northwest, you know, everyone goes to it. The the short circuit riders go, and the the road riders go, and you know, they can use the line that they're there to get practice for the TT. You know, I think we all agree a lot of them are are there for more than that. You know, they're there to to fight for wins and and it also happens to be before the tt so it happens to be good practice for the tt it's, it's not why they go but but when the you know the the northwest and the tt has happened like with whatever you know injuries we've had to riders throughout them events um you know and, and, and with whatever else can happen in road racing and people having good years people having bad years people calling it you know their season early after a good tt People call in their season early after a, a bad campaign, and the also Grand, Grand Prix can, is the next one along. So it can lose. You know, the, the the lineup is just not the same as the previous two internationals, and it, it's unfortunate because it is the best track I've ever rode in my life. It, it is phenomenal to ride. And I'm sure you'll agree, Dom. It's a. Uh, I couldn't agree more, mate. It is. It, it, it is phenomenal. It's awesome. So it is the road surface, the conditions, the. Uh, the work that the club put in, like um, you can't make road races safe, but they have removed an awful lot of uh, hedges, and it's still every bit of a uh, as exciting spectacle to watch. You know, it still is a very much so uh, road race. You know, it's a, it's a it's a it's as alive as all the road races are. Um, you know, despite having a lot of heads and removed, and as a rider, that's it's nice to see the the work that goes in. So, I, just, I, I really hope it continues. Um, you know, it's somewhere that. I would love to return to in the future. You know, I, I can't see it being a uh, being next season, but uh, but I would like to think that if I did want to return at some point in the future, that the the opportunity to do it would be there because the event is still in existence. Um, so that's all I can really say. Um, good luck to them, and uh, and I hope it really works out. Fantastic. And uh, one thing I, I 
while I was reading up on the event, uh, I seen that years ago. So between 1922 and 1952, the the track was actually 21 miles long. Uh, it had yeah. a seven mile straight. Imagine the speed, the top speed <laughs> if they raced on there now. It, it also used to have car racing at. Yeah, that's right. Did as well, yeah. Uh, so, it's, uh, unfortunately, there's somewhere. a lot of history, isn't it? Yeah, massive history, and uh, like you say, for the uh, obviously, ho- hopefully, we'll get something sorted one way or another, and the race will continue. But uh, I tell you what, we'll. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to the pod before, but sometimes we do Dom versus the guest, and uh, we we'll do right. a little a little quiz. So, well, it's a multi choice quiz. But I t- uh, just just before we start that, uh, obviously, I know you've been involved with the uh, Aaron Clifford, uh, like the sort of yeah. raising awareness and the charity stuff. Have you got any updates on how how he's doing after his crash? Um, the the last I seen, you know, it gets to the point now where you know, looking looking on the Facebook really, um, you know, and, and not not torturing Big Ken with a, a message or anything. So it looks to be, you know, I've seen photos of him with. Uh, I actually seen James Putrell was in the hospital. Um, yes, I seen James that. Obviously, had got paralysed at Brands Hatch a few years back. So it's nice to see a photo of the two of them together, and you know, Aaron sitting with a smile on his face. And you know, I'm not a doctor, but I think. Uh, a head injury is a type of thing where you know it, the prognosis can be really, really, really good. You just have to be patient and and take time. You know, I've had friends before have had head injuries. I, I had a serious head injury when I was a, a kid in a, a car accident, um, and things like that take time. And you know, everything comes back. So I can only hope that uh, that is the case with Aaron. And you know, it, it's a pity. You know, the main thing is that uh, that. You know, he's now out of uh, danger. You know, it, it sounded very worrying at, at the beginning. Um, but uh, you know, he was having a great season. But all that's all that's not relevant. You know, when when your life kind of comes into mm-hmm. you know into question. But uh, it'd be great to see him back on a motorbike again. I think as racers, we always uh, dream like that. So I think uh, we'd all agree that it would be great to see him uh, with the helmet back on, or, or even at a BSB, just watching on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah. If you if you see him, send us send him our best wishes from from both of us. At, I was going to say everyone are chasing the racing, but there's just being dumb. So <laughs> both, both both the <laughs> I'll put all up. I says just walk in. No. <laughs> sorry, Terry. No, sorry, Glenn. I'll mention it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, doke. So we'll, we've got ten questions, and basically uh, we'll just alternate between you and uh, uh, you and Dom who can answer first, and uh, I'll right. read the question, and then it'll, it's A, B, or C. Okay, so. Right. Okay, Glenn, you can answer this one first. Question one. America's Wayne Rainey was three-time 500cc world champion. Sadly, his career was cut short after su- suffering a serious back injury after an innocuous crash at Mizano. What year did he win his last world title? Is it A, 1992, B, 1993, or C, 1994? Uh, B. You're going B and Dom. I'm having a clue. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go A. Let's go A. Okay, 1992. Okay. So, question two: Which of the following riders have never won a British Superbike title? A. Sean Emmett. B. Terry Reimer. Or C. Rob McElney. Uh, so, Dom. Oh, how are you, man? I was gonna answer the same answer that he was gonna give on this one. Uh, I'm gonna go. Let's go, oh, Terry. What well, Terry there? So number n- number B. number B. Let it be. Number what about B. you, Glenn? <laughs> uh, Rob Mack, C. Rob Mack, so C. Okay. Question, my answer. <laughs> question three: Which of the following corners do not come? Sorry, which of the following corners do you come to first on the TT oh, course? No, so we'll see if you've done your homework, Glenn. So you <laughs> yeah. come to this one first. Is it A. Handley's, B. Caramore, or C. Doran's? Right. So. Handley's is before Kara Moore and Doran's uh, I have no idea where Doran's is so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to take a chance uh, Handley's is is uh, just after the the 11th um, I'm, I'll go I'll go Handley's but uh, Doran's could be anywhere in the track um, I think go Handley's yeah <laughs> okay Tom God I'm gonna go Doran's Hanley's Caramore. It's just which one comes first? Oh shite. C? I think it's no. Oh, there'll be people screaming at this, you know, Glenn. There'll be people going, You bloody know, idiots. Man. It's, it's, you know what? Because I'm learning at loads and like the big corners names stand out, but Doran's like Doran's 
No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with C. He have not I've been rounded a few times. I should know. <laughs> nah, it's definitely Hanley's, isn't it? Because Doran's isn't. Well, like... we'll see. We'll see in a second when we move on. But uh, Dom's no. went C. Doran. So, okay, I've won Chris... round there. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Question four: uh, The last five World Superbike World Titles have been won by a man from Northern Ireland. What nationality was the last rider to win a title before Johnny Ray? So, is it A. Italian, B. English? Or C French. So Dom? Uh, C French. C. And e- Flint? Yes, it was Sylvain Gantoni, wasn't it? French. Oh, no. French. Was it? Yeah, it was. I think so, yeah. Okay. I think Dom's buzzing that he's got the I've same answer. I've actually got an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I okay, question, question Surrender five. Monkey. <laughs> so, which of. Which of the following riders has won the most TT... Sorry, which of the following riders has the most TT wins? A, Peter Hickman, B, Robert Dunlop, or C, Michael Rutter? So, Glenn? Uh, Robert Dunlop. Dunlop's a B. And what about you, Dom? Most wins. Most wins, yeah. Hold on. you Peter now, is it? I'm going to oh. go A. I feel I'm going to go A. I, think. I hope it's Robert. Okay. Everyone wants it to be Robert. Question <laughs> six. Uh, which which UK race circuit is the longest length? So is it A, Cadwell Park, the full circuit, B, Oulton Park International, or C, Oliver's Mount? So, Glenn? Uh, longest uh, B, Oulton Park. B, and Dom? I'm going to go Oliver's Mount. Okay, Oliver's Mount. So C. Have you ever been Oliver's Mount, Glenn? No, that's why I couldn't even put it in. I don't know. I, I, I've <laughs> played it on the old PlayStation game years ago, but I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't know how long it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Question seven: Which of the following road racers has raced in a 250 World Championship Grand Prix? E. A. Lee Johnston. B. William Dunlop. Or C. Ryan Farquhar. B. William Dunlop. Is that? I can't remember if it's you or Dom first. Is it you? Oh, wait, it's William. William, yeah. So you've both said Dunlop, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, B. Question eight. So just remind us who's who's going to say this well, first. I'll have to go so first, Dom, that yeah, Dom right. First. Yeah, it is Dom because I went first, so that means I go one, three, five, seven, and nine. Yes, yeah, so Dom. Okay. Uh, so question eight. Which year did the first ever Moto Three World Championship take place? Two thousand. What? A two thousand twelve. <laughs> B two thousand thirteen. Or C, 2011. Ooh. So when did it go from 135s to Moto 3? Wait, that... A, 12. 12. I'm going to 12. Okay, and Glenn? No. I didn't even know. Um, it was C, 11. 2011. Shit. Okay, and I quest- hate this game. I hate this game. <laughs> so, question question nine. So, Glenn, first, which of the following riders has won the most BSB titles, all classes included? Is it A. John Reynolds, B. Keith Farmer, or C. Yuichi Kiyonari? Oh, Kio won it three times, didn't he? Um, Farmers won thousand super sport. Uh, I don't have a clue how many times. Um, no, Keo's won it. Right, C. C, Richie oh. Kianari and Dom. No, Keo's won it four times. Yeah, he has. Farmer's won it four times, so I'm going to go John Reynolds for shits and giggles. John Reynolds, <laughs> okay. And <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, bro. And the, the final question, so who has won most Macau Grand Prix? Stuart Easton? Ian Hutchinson or Steve Plater, A, B, or C. Dom? It'll be Stuart Easton. Stuart Easton, so you're going A. Oh, no. And Glenn? Uh, yeah, Stuart Easton. He never did the TT, okay. did he? He was too talk for two he... minutes, and I'll just mark. Oh, I right, know, but um, <laughs> Stuart never did it. He did the... No, he didn't, and everyone always said he would have been a good TT rider. You know, he was sort of smooth. Um, he had his injury at Northwest, didn't he? Um, and I think that was that. Now is that all right? I'm. You see, that's the thing because, like, like you say, you know, people don't. You know, people just get hung up on titles, don't they? I think where you have, you've got to do them all to be a roads rider. It's a, it's a lot of shite in it, you know. Mm. And he was very much one of those because he was so. Hold on, how many Northwest did he win? Did he win? Eastern. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, he definitely would have won one or two. I th- I'm pretty sure. 
It, wait, you just think, think so? I'm, 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 I'm fully guessing. I'm. It's got to be a yes because, like, you see it on his sheer caliber of riding. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, I, I would imagine he won one. Do you, hear, do you ever reckon Chrissy will will do a road race? No, I, I met his mother. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a no question. Here's, here's a question, right? Obviously, yeah. you're you're young and you're a little lad, right? He comes up to you in a few years and says, "Dad, I want to be a road racer." <laughs> no, <laughs> no, straight off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like Graham's mentioned doing the Northwest next year, and look, like I said, Graham, you will go and you will win the Northwest one one day. You know, you will. You're you're a good enough rider, um, and you're only going to get better. But you're not ready for it just yet. And that doesn't mean you're not ready in terms of to go and win, but you're not ready to, you know, to to understand just everything that that you know that, uh, the actual you world in control of, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the the results are in and uh, dr- <laughs> drum roll. So we've got uh, Glenn, you scored four out of ten, <laughs> and uh, we've got Dom on a uh, six out of yes! ten. Oh! Yes, yes. <laughs> Get the get the get the Facebook fired up. Herbertson's <laughs> beating Glenn Irwin. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look, I can hear the grit in his voice. He's like, <laughs> Just to let you know, we, we usually do five questions, and I think Dom usually gets one out of five. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's, he's on a roll. So oh, anyway, the, yeah. uh, so the first question. Uh, so the Wayne Rainey one. Which year did he win the world title? I've got a uh, nine A nineteen ninety two. Which of the following riders never won a British Superbike title? It was Sean Emmett. Uh, oh. Question three. Which of the following corners do you come to first on the TT course? So question three is C, Dor- Doran's. Where is that? Where, where is Doran's? Is, is that hell? Doran's? Is that not where Guy Martin had his crash? Oh, Balagari. No, that's not Doran's. We've definitely had Doran's as an answer to one of our questions before. On the, <laughs> I definitely recognise it from this podcast. Doran's. We'll Google it's it. Definitely through the Glen Helen section, anyway. And then uh, question four. <laughs> it was uh, yeah. You both got that one right. So French. So um, the nationality of the the person before Jonathan Ray to win the World Superbike title. Obviously, Sylvain Guintoli, French. Question five, uh, which of the following riders has the most TT wins? Uh, we've got C, Michael Rutter. What? How many? Uh, well, he's had a few electric ones recently, hasn't he? So oh, be- oh, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to have to go here, right? But t- no, no, that doesn't count. Not on this show, that doesn't count. No, 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 let's go back. One minute. Question six, uh, so which of the UK circuits was the longest in length? That was Oulton Park International. Was so it? You got, uh, Glenn got that one right. Yeah, couldn't have been far off though. Question seven. Uh, which of the <laughs> following matter? It was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so which which of the following races? Uh, road races raced in two fifty World Championship race. You both got that one right as well. William Dunlop. Uh, question eight. Which of the which year did the first ever Moto Three World Championship take place? Two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Question. Uh, question. Oh. Nine, which was which of the following riders has won the most BSB titles all classes? We've got B. Keith Farmer. Hey. So you reach your kin have only won three. Well, yeah. if that's if, that's if my questions are right, <laughs> loads of people tweet me. Hold on, I wish you'd hold on. Hold on. Question... You're guessing this. No, right, no. I've just openly bragged in Glenn's <laughs> face, and I'm just beating. Him. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to kill you, Chris. And then, uh, <laughs> question ten: Who's won the most Macau Grand Prix? It is A, which was Stuart Easton. So you both got that one right. Well done. Ah. Well, uh, I've, it's obviously been a, it's uh, probably one of our longest podcasts this, so thanks very much for joining us. Uh, before you go, obviously you can't announce anything for next year, but uh, if anyone's wanting to um, to get any sort of merchandise or anything, have you, do you sell merchandise? Uh, yeah, we, we actually, uh, I'm just uh, literally announcing uh, my, my new stuff now, so it's a, uh, it's uh, will be announced on my social media. If you keep an eye out on my Twitter um, before the end of November, because there's some cool little things uh, for like kids and whatnot for Christmas as well. Some different ideas, um, you know, rather than the usual t-shirts and that. So there will be a link up on my social media pages um, at the end of this month. Uh, probably, if not before, from middle of November to the end of the, end of the month, there will be a full range of new stuff. Different, uh, different supplier. It's all really, really cool. All different types of ranges, and it's all yeah. It's it's quite nice as well. 
If people want to follow you on Instagram and Twitter and stuff, what's your Twitter tag? Yeah, the Twitter is just uh, at G Irwin Racing. Um, Instagram is just my my name, Glenn Irwin, and my Facebook is Glenn Irwin Racing. So, yeah, get on, give us a follow, and uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, have an exciting year with a bit of fun and uh, listen to you two numpties more often <laughs> on, on, your, on your podcast. Uh, does. Fantastic. Well, uh, and for those people that are are eager to find out what what your plans are for next year, do you have a date that it's getting announced? Uh, I think yeah. I'd like to think uh, sort of by the the, the latter end of uh, this month, um, that we'll know a lot more. Still, still a few boxes, uh, you know, to to cross just yet, but um, it's all it's all beginning to look a bit closer, and, and we'll know a lot more very soon. And will you you and your brothers be over at the NEC? Uh, yes, I, I would expect to be. Yeah, I, I go every year. I'll be there with showy helmets. So, uh, um, yeah, I'll be with showy helmets and with whatever else I may have to do as well. Fantastic. Well, I'll, I'll see you down there. And uh, yeah, from I was going to again, I was going to say from all of us at Chase the Racing, but from me and Dom, thank you very much. <laughs> no, <laughs> no worries, Good. boys. Keep her lit. <laughs> Cheers, Glenn. Cheers, mate. I did all that. See you later. But that was a crack and chat, that mind, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's it's going to end up one of our longest podcasts, but I think it was well worth it. And um, It'll be like, oh, me sore arth, me sore arth. <laughs> Chris has been round, me sore arth. <laughs> another victory for Dom versus the guest as well. I think that's victory number two. Oh, yes, he's never living that down. He's never living that down, but hey-ho. So, anyway, before we pack up totally, Chrissy, how, how's that arm, son? Obviously, you've been under the knife and you, you, your tits aren't bigger, so it's <laughs> obviously something to do with the shoulder of yours. Yeah, that's it. So, I went in a Tuesday for surgery. Like I said on the last podcast, it's actually a, um, it's an operation that needed doing and it's been in the pipeline for probably like well over a year I've needed this. And it's one of those things where... In the paddock, a lot of lads w- will be carrying injuries, but it's not something that you sort of talk about or p- publicise because at the end of the day, it's a bit of a weakness. Yes, I understand. So it's, I've massively kept it on the on the DL this year. The DL. Hold on. Now, you know these videos you're shooting, your DL. What, 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 what's with the DL? Just say it down low. You're not... <laughs> You're not Will Smith's son here, you know what I mean? <laughs> On the DL. If I have a word with yourself, you're in media now, son. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. So, it is funny sitting with this new uh, setup. I think we'll be going back yeah, to the boat. I know we're going to have to because this is a bit but... crotch heavy for me because I'm, I'm just <laughs> speaking at the microphone. We'll try to look at you, but you just got your, your full on wide leg open here. <laughs> I'm looking at your DL too much. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, sorry. So your shoulder. How, how are you getting on? Yeah, so it's. Um... I actually had a few problems this this season when we had pre-season testing right at the beginning of the season at Silverstone. I didn't actually have a crash, but I had a, a little bit of a tank slapper. And as the bike, you know, so the, I started to lose the rear and as it snapped, it, it pulled, obviously pulled us out the seat and it pulled my shoulder out of the socket. So I didn't crash the bike, but I, I had to go to hospital and it, I was in for, it must have been out of place for about three hours or something. And it the the people really really struggled getting it back into joint um and then i've it's been a, like a lad knocked us off at donnington this year and as he as he hit us that that pushed that you know forced my shoulder out of joint so when i hit the ground it was already out and it was that was unbelievably painful um so i'm it's one of those things you know it's it's not a pleasant a pleasant feeling you know getting an operation but it needed doing and it's massively for the greater good and you've been on morphine before the show you do look a little glazed over it's brilliant i've I've been on morphine for it'll be coming up a full week now uh they obviously gave us some to take home and it's because i don't drink or take drugs or anything so my tolerance is extremely low for any you know though you know these weaknesses you know these weaknesses we're telling you about all these lads are going to be spiking your drinks with morphine (laughs) and stuff like that now that's it so um yeah, I've, I've, it, t- it sort of takes the edge off the pain and, uh, you know, I've got this sling on for six weeks and then I think it's it's about three months I need to take off doing any serious sport, but obviously it's, I've timed it perfectly so that I've got the off-season and then 
as soon as you know get Christmas out of the way, I'll be back in the gym and get preparing for uh, next season. Uh, obviously, on the, on the podcast uh, that we've just done, the I mentioned that the fact that I've I have got something sorted for next year, which will be it'll be getting announced before our next podcast. So uh, I'm really really excited about that, and uh, obviously I just want, like grateful to all the people involved for for sorting it and look. I'm going to enjoy talking is it, is about it. Is, it, is, it is, is this the drugs talking here? That smiles <laughs> unreal. See, obviously, very excited, mate. Yeah. Very excited, which is mint. But which uh, is mint. obviously, for yourself, the the season hasn't actually finished yet, and you're off to China. China, China. Uh, so, when do you fly? Uh, Wednesday. I actually fly Wednesday. from Heathrow on the Wednesday. There is so it a direct flight or a uh, direct flight, and then you land in Hong Kong, then you get a train, and then you get on a boat, <laughs> then you get on, then you get there, and then. You literally just walk to the hotel from there, like straight, mm. like um, straight I've, there. I've heard loads of good things from from people who have been out to Macau, both competing and just people like in teams and whatever. They say it's like the best trip ever, best place. What's what's your take on on the on the place? Not not the racing. You take fresh air for granted anyway, because I'm, I'm telling you, because obviously it's it's so muggy and like hot, you know, and humid and that, which way we don't get in the northeast whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, bar that. It, it's definitely it's a trip of a lifetime. It's absolutely class, and it's obviously if you're in there gambling, it's 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 unreal because it is just a floating casino. I someone told me more money gets gambled at Macau than at Vegas. Yeah, it makes more money than Vegas. You know, it's just like well, obviously all the locals they don't go on holiday; they just save all their money all year, and their holiday oh is to go and try and double it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's honestly that's all they're doing now. But it's uh, no so heading out over there. And um, it's a long time away from work. <laughs> like um, I don't do well with doing nothing. That's that's my only little worry. Obviously, there's your bike show and everything. You know, the Macau government pay for her to go over, pay mm-hmm. the teams, pay the pay for everything. So yeah, it's good to get a little bit of a wind down. But going into Macau, it's uh, the next stage is obviously just improving where I was last year. Because yeah. this time last year, I, I lost my digit. Mm-hmm. So. For you to sit here in the sling instead of me is actually quite a nice chase, son. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but uh, but anyway. Well, while while you're there, I expect you to be spreading the word, the chasing the racing word, and I'll I'll be checking the the downloads to see if if we're getting any in, increase in the volume of the Chinese downloads. I guess they'll be in debt. They are. <laughs> we'll be dropping them all, but uh, no. But um, obviously, flying out there Wednesday, get over there. So you're going to unfortunately have a couple of weeks. Without a podcast, unless Chrissy actually finds, you know, a, a double of me, God help you, if there is a double. How long are you out there for? Um, I think it's 10 days or something. Right. So. 10 days and it's only like, you get there, then you get the one practice on Thursday, then you get the morning warm up, then qualifying, and then one race. Mm-hmm. And from from the track point of view, obviously I've, I've watched it on TV and, you know, it's, you know, lined with arm core. What What's it like to ride into? It's mint. Surface good? It's mint. It's just mint. Thing is, you, you know you know when you get a hot day on a, a short circuit back here, your just confidence goes up, doesn't it? You think, it's hot. How are there? It's just hot all the time. Mm. It's just surreal, man. Grip level good. Mint. Absolutely mint. It's the whole thing. Because obviously it's like mainly a car event. Mm. So the car lads are just putting like endless amount of rubber down. Mm. Just just bang, 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 bang. And then by the time we get there on the race day, it's like, Let's go for it. It's mm. absolutely class, man. Absolutely class. But no, there'll be plenty to talk about when we get back there, Chrissy. And uh, obviously, we'll we'll have a full Macau update and how your arm is. And obviously, your news will be out. Oh, there's lots to, lots to talk about. But here, I think this podcast will be far too long. I think it'll be... It'll be on still going when I'm still in China. The amount of time... The amount of time... We've been... Don't have wine gums, kids. They're, they're bad for you. There must be actual wine in them. But anyway, Chrissy... Get well soon, lad. Yeah, we'll, sure that. I will do. And uh, obviously, my best wishes for Macau. I hope it's a you know a safe and successful event. And uh, you know, you get some wheelies, bitches. That's get it. some wheelies. Whereabouts did you finish there last year? Eighteenth. Uh, yeah, uh, but obviously, you know, without sound like a little whinge, but uh, obviously with my hand, I qualified right at the back, and uh, it was like twenty seventh position or twenty sixth position. Mm-hmm. So finishing eighteenth over the moon with that, but. Obviously, just want to go out there and improve, um, improve and get some track time, get some Fantastic. track time. Good, good. So we'll go from there. But obviously, thank you to Glenn for being our guest. Absolutely awesome. You know what I mean? I think he's definitely 
tidied a few things up there, especially on my point of view, because you don't get these opportunities to sit down again well, what's actually happened. Mm-hmm. And just to get his side of it and the, the fact that he's not pissing people off, he's not burning bridges, and it's that's it, refreshing. Mm-hmm. It's really refreshing. Just, just out of interest, we've had a lot of... Uh, Obviously, I put that thing on the Twitter and the Facebook asking for questions and stuff for Glenn. Aye. And there's a, there has been a lot of people talking about the whole will he or will he not do a 130 on his first year and stuff like that. Obviously, as a competitor, watch, you know, knowing what he what he can do, say, at the Northwest and the Ulster and what, what he can do on the short circuits, do you think, it, you know, is is there a possibility that he could do 130 first year or do you think it's... No, no, there's always that possibility. You need the look on your side. You always the need the look. You need the weather. You need everything, you know. The thing is, it's like the, the lads who have turned up and done them near lab times, you know, they haven't turned up on, you know, they haven't turned up with their own bikes and they haven't turned up on with crap people and, you know, they get the support straight off the bat, you know, the, the Isle of Man TT team have mm-hmm. obviously said look you know we've got a we've got a, an established name coming and they chuck a lot of effort into that and make it as safe as possible so hey never rule it out mate mm-hmm. never rule it out he's more than capable as a rider as we all know he's a hundred percent capable of it but he's very much got the right attitude of being the mature approach to it yeah. instead of going well if you aim for it you know, you know, if he aims for that he doesn't get it, it's going to disappoint him or even worse he could hurt himself trying to chase that straight off the bat mm-hmm. And if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But as a rider, he is 100% capable of it. Yeah. I like the way Glenn approaches his racing. And, you know, it's 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 not just sort of turning up and having a go. He's, he thinks a lot about the racing. He yeah. has a lot of people helping him out. I know Charlie King works with the ones as a sort of spotter. And he, he works with various other people. You know, you see him walking the track a lot. Uh, he's, you know, you it's can calculated. See, see, yeah, he takes it seriously. And obviously with the training and everything. And I think he's also good for... You know, he's we're talking about him helping his brother, uh, brothers, but I think he's been very good for the the Irish, um, you know, the Irish lads coming through. I think he oh, helps totally, yeah. helps a lot of the young lads uh, with advice and sponsors and stuff. So he's. Uh, I like to meet his sister. I've I've never no me I I'm didn't know you had a sister. I you know kept you that a sister. secret, Glenn. You kept that a secret. <laughs> probably for a good reason. Aye, that's it. She's probably, she's probably like like six foot tall, blonde, absolutely stunning. Like she's like you're not coming, you're not coming, you're staying there. I tell you what. Um, <laughs> obviously, huge thanks to Incontango Training, our our sponsor for yes. the podcast. Yeah. I would also like to say a special thanks to to our Hardy Breed Roads correspondent for sending us the questions for the the Dom versus the guest. Dom's the boy. And also <laughs> the um some information on on various things that were talked about. Oh, I don't know if you've seen, but Hardy Breed are, are doing a this high five um sort oh, of thing uh, with yeah. sort of asking people to donate five pounds towards the um. The, the road racing cup yes idea yeah. that i shared we've, we've spoke about it on the podcast and yeah. i shared it on twitter but essentially all the money that's getting raised is getting put into a prize fund for and an, supported yeah. yeah national road racing as a sort of as a prize fund for for the lads um so every penny goes back to the sport and if you're in a position to to help you know me and Dom are both supporting the, the high five campaign and um high four and a bit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah mate. that was so gay that, that was one of the, anyway here yeah. right anyway right yeah chrissy let's shut this down yeah, thank, thank you glenn thank you our sponsors thank you everyone thanks everyone and uh, best of luck at macau see you soon cheers mate ciao <laughs>